canon, the standard of truth, the entire system of Epicurean philosophy is based on the study of nature. Taken together, our connections with nature are referred to as the canon of truth, which is the measure or test of those opinions which we hold to be true. Epicurus identified three categories of human faculties, which comprise the way in which we measure truth. 1. The five senses, the faculties by which we perceive sight, sound, taste, touch, and smell. 2. The anticipations, a mental faculty by which we process abstractions. And 3. The feelings, the faculty by which we perceive pleasure and pain. In setting out his canon, Epicurus was reacting against the skeptics, who denied that it was possible for humans to have clear knowledge about the world around us, and the Platonists, who held that logic is the pathway to a divine and absolute truth that governs all humanity at all times and all places. While other schools deny that truth is knowable by ordinary humans, we reject that view and hold that humans can have confidence in their conclusions by referring to the proper standard for establishing something as true. This is the role of the Epicurean canon of truth. By it, we recognize that our natural faculties are the fundamental touchstone on which we can make judgments as to what is and is not true. The canon is sometimes compared to a tripod because its three legs provide a steady foundation on which we make all judgments about what is true and what is false. It is important to see that the faculties of the canon are non-rational. The faculties of the canon report to us their perceptions, and it is up to our minds to organize this raw data into opinions that we can consider to be true or false. Each natural faculty has unique jurisdiction over its particular aspect of nature. Each is a direct contact with reality that reports to us raw and unprocessed information. Only eyes can see, only ears can hear, only the faculty of pleasure and pain can inform us what to choose and what to avoid. They are nature's stop and go signals. Only the faculty of anticipations can allow us to form and work with concepts in a way consistent with human nature. In this role as witnesses, the faculties of the canon work together to provide data. On the foundation that that data, our minds then weigh and balance this information. Comparing data from multiple observations and under varying conditions, and from the resulting data, we assemble those observations into conclusions. Through this process of gathering data and testing our opinions against that data, we are enabled by nature to have confidence that our judgments are consistent with reality. The Epicurean canon has many profound implications. Among the most important is that the canon establishes nature and not reason as the ultimate standard and authority for truth. Nature herself is the judge of what is and is not contrary to nature, and the only faculty given to us by nature to judge that which is desirable and undesirable in itself is the faculty of pleasure and pain. Thus wisdom through true reasoning is the process of properly processing the information provided by the canon to achieve pleasurable living. Reason is used in the service of pleasurable living to decide when to forego certain pleasures or to choose certain pains, but always toward the single goal of living pleasurably. Abstractions and opinions about ethical issues are not direct contacts with reality, and in order to be considered to be true, must always be tested against nature's goal for life, living pleasurably. Another profound implication is that the canon emancipates us from arbitrary authorities. A famous example of this was the Epicurean defiance of conventional notions of the role of women and slaves, who are treated as intellectual equals in the Garden of Epicurus. In their search for truth, the Epicureans do not look to priests, to mediators, to divine revelation, or to experts in logic, but to the faculties provided by nature. Thus, Epicureans study how these faculties operate, how the data they provide can sometimes be distorted, and how those distortions can be corrected. Only by grounding all our opinions and our choices in the data provided by the canon of truth can we live happily and in accordance with nature.